What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Casey. So I want to talk about something. Camping sleep setups, sleep systems, like sleeping bags, mattresses, air beds. In a video earlier in February, the rooftop tent review video, which blew up. That video has like almost 200,000 views, which is crazy. Thank you guys. Appreciate it for watching the videos. But in that video, if I go back and watch what was the most popular section of the video, it was when I started talking about my sleep system. I un unpacked, unrolled my sleep system that I use in my different rooftop tents or in my ground tent. It's the same for everything. And it was really popular. It was really high watched. I can see some data about the videos. It was really heavily watched. So I didn't really go into much detail about this system, but I've been changing and adding and removing and trying different gear for, for the last two or three, actually even more, like four years. Ever since for you guys, the OG watchers, when, when I started out the channel and I didn't have a rooftop tent and I had that quick instant up green tent that I would throw out and then it would pop up. That's when I first started working on my sleep system and it's evolved quite a bit. I've spent a ton of money and I will warn you guys, this setup is not cheap, but it is versatile, it's comfortable. And most of all, when I'm out in the really cold weather, because I love camping in the winter, the winter is awesome. It is super warm. This is very, very warm. And I've never had a time where I've felt cold with this setup. I want to just walk you through the thought process, the experience, the reasoning why my sleep system is the way it is. Now, I'm going to clean off this table here because I'm getting ready to go out on another trip. I know you guys keep asking in the comments, hey, when are you gonna take the demonator out? We wanna see the demonator. Okay, I'm gonna to try to take it out next week. I'm gonna try my best. So maybe the next video after this one, I'm gonna go camping the demonator because it's been a while since I took it out. Enough rambling on. So let's get this on the table and I'll just kind of walk you through all the items, the size, the dimension, what it's good for, and some things you guys might wanna think about if you're putting together your own sleep system for your rooftop tent, for your ground tent, for your we got the space pod over there as well. You guys are unfamiliar with my, my stove setup. This is a the Jetboil Genesis, which I'm trying to migrate away from using. I'm trying to get to using all electric. So using a uh, inductive cooktop, relying on my EcoFlow Delta Pro Max. So then I'm not, then I'm not buying fuel all the time. Every time I go out, I don't want to be buying fuel. Those little fuel canisters are super annoying. I don't want to have to bring a propane tank because it's also annoying when I go on the ferry. By the way, I was just adding up all my ferries from last year because I had to do my taxes. I rode the ferry 20 times last year. And just so you know, the ferry usually costs about a hundred bucks each way. So <laughs> $2,000 a year on ferry costs alone to go camping and make videos. Yeah, just a little behind the scenes with uh, living on an island and making overland off-road camping videos. And while we're on the topic of trips, I just booked my tickets or whatever, booked my reservation or bought tickets to Overland Expo Pacific Northwest. I've never been. A lot of the crew, the YouTube crew, BC crew like Sean and all those guys and Epic are all going down. A lot of my YouTube friends are gonna be there as well. I hope to see as many of you guys as possible at Overland Expo Pacific Northwest. That's in Oregon, it's the last weekend of June. If you're gonna be there, let me know in the comments. And if you see me, definitely say hi, grab a picture, it'd be awesome. I love doing that kind of stuff. I usually just take this and uh, unpack it on top of the hood of the JK to air it out. I always, uh, two things, and I'll go over this in a second, but this is down, so I don't want to keep it all packed up all the time. I want to, um, what is that? I forget what it, it loses its loft. Is that it, the right word, loft? If you squish it. So you don't want to store down all squished up, but also if there's any moisture in the tent, from condensation or anything like that, and it's on here, I want to make sure it's dried off when I get home. Now this is definitely not a camping setup for backpacking. This is for like, you're bringing your stuff in your Jeep, in your, maybe your Toyota, whatever. Whatever your off-road vehicle is or camping vehicle is. This is heavy, it's kind of bulky. It's not something I would take hiking camping because I would never do that anyways. I never go hiking camping. Pillows, I'm not gonna talk about pillows. You can bring whatever you want for pillows. I bring two regular size pillows because why not? And actually, 
when I roll all of this up, I'll show you at the end, I roll everything up, including the pillows in here, because it's just super simple. It's a lot easier to get uh, packed up at the end of a trip or in the morning when you're getting going, all that stuff. And uh, I don't like stuffing stuff in stuff sacks, all that other stuff. I just wanna have everything, roll it up. I'll show you, I'll show you at the end, just hang tight. There's one thing I'm still trying to figure out uh, solution for, and that's actually kind of protecting the outside of this when it's rolled up. I don't want to have to stuff it. I don't have to stuff it into a bag. Like I hate stuffing my camping gear into a bag, especially when it's super cold. It's like, just like, I don't know. It's hard on your hands trying to put stuff in compression sacks and stuff. So I just like to roll it out a lot, but it leaves the outside exposed. Um, it leaves this underside, which is going to be the outside when we roll it up exposed. So I'd like to find something to kind of protect this or keep water drips or whatever might land on this when I'm out a little bit more protected. So maybe some sort of sleep, but you'll see what I'm talking about when I roll this up at the end of this video. All right, let's get into what's going on here. One more thing. I know it's always like one more thing, one more thing. On the last camping trip I went out, I was wearing my Viking knitted cap, hat, it's not a helmet, won't protect you. It was super cool, and I asked you guys if you wanted any of these, because my wife makes them, which is super awesome. They're really nice, and I love mine. It's right, no, nah, it's over there. I'm not gonna get it. Anyways, she started to make a few more. These are gonna be super limited, and I was gonna put these on dirtyanddangerous.com and then donate the money to charity. So this is the first one. These ones don't have ear flaps, but I'm gonna put this, it's like a burgundy, it's a, Kind of like snazzleberry almost. I'm gonna put this one up on dirtyanddangerous.com. It's a one-off, it's for charity, it's final sale if it doesn't fit. I don't know what to tell you, but I'll put some measurements about the head size on here. And uh, so I'm only gonna put one, one or two of these up at a time. I'll let you guys know in the videos or um, maybe on a community post, but uh, I thought it was a good, good way to do some charity fundraising. So these will be up, this will be up shortly. If not by this video going up, it might already be sold. Who knows? Dirtyanddangerous.com though, check it out. Should we start at the lower layer or the upper? Let's start at the, the lowest, lowest layer, the lowest, the underneath. So this actually is maybe the one thing that you could pick your own. There's a couple really good air mattress, air beds out there. This one is, let me see, this is the Thermarest Mondo King. It's self-inflating partially so it's got a uh, memory foam core in it. And then you can uh, open up the air valve here and it will start to inflate up to a certain point. And then you can add more air to it if you wanna make it more firm or maybe whatever you're sleeping on um, isn't very comfortable. You wanna add a little bit more air. Uh, I have heard good things about some other companies like Xped. Um, I don't know what side of, size, sort of dimensions XPEDS comes in, but this is 30 inches by 90 inches. And I find this to be a really good size for me. I'm six foot two um, and I'm bigger. They do make smaller ones. And so keep the dimensions in mind because it's gonna be important when we look at the next item in my sleep system. So the big things with the Thermarest, and this is with like any sleep system, you wanna have really good insulation. Um, not just comfort, but like a really good, bad way to get cold or a really good way to get cold. I don't know which way this makes sense. But anyways, an easy way to get cold is to not be warm from underneath. So the big thing with this is it has an R value of 7.0, which to me in doing my research seems to be really good for an insulation uh, layer underneath of you, which means you're not gonna get much cold or any cold up from underneath you. Now in a rooftop tent, when you've got a mattress underneath of this as well, it's gonna be really comfortable and it really doesn't matter what mattress your rooftop tent ends with, ends and uh, yeah, comes with. It doesn't matter what type of mattress your rooftop tent comes with. You can sleep on a one inch or a three inch, a soft or a or a firm or a multi layer, multi density. It doesn't matter. You just kind of throw this on, and it's always comfortable. I've slept on top of a camping cot with this, super comfortable. And I suppose you could sleep on the ground with this. It would be super comfortable because it inflates. If you max it out with air, it's uh, 10 centimeters, which I think is like four inches. So it's it's quite thick. If we blow this all the way up, let me get the, the air compressor, I'll show you. There we go, we got this inflated and uh, you can see it just, it's quite, quite thick. 
which is good. So if you need to sleep on rocks, because you like rocks, this also works really well. So it's versatile. And for me, it's something I can drop into any rooftop tent, or if I don't have my rooftop tent and I'm bringing in my ground tent, I can use the same sleep system all the time. Okay, where were we before the garage door started opening? Um, yeah, so this is super thick. Now, I don't usually inflate this like this. Usually what I will do is just let it self inflate. Um, what I'll let it do is just self inflate. Uh, if I'm sleeping in my rooftop tent, you know, I usually have a moderately comfortable mattress and then this just doing it self inflating with a bit of air in it and the memory foam expanding is usually quite, quite comfortable. Yeah, I usually just let it do its thing and I don't get an air pump out unless I really need to, ground tent, stuff like that. Now, the other thing I wanted to just kind of explain is, well, why use an air mattress at all? You've got a rooftop tent, why not just sleep on the mattress? Uh, one, I'm usually testing and changing different rooftop tents all the time, or often enough that, um, you know, it can be a really uncomfortable trip the first time out in a rooftop tent and you don't know what the mattress is gonna be like. So I always have this to bring with me. It's the same, it's, it's the same sleep system, doesn't matter what rooftop tent I'm in. Um, but the other thing is it gives me a base. So we're gonna get to the next couple of layers here in a second, but this gives me a base that I can attach them to. And it's always, um, you know, I always have it with me and it, it just lets me kind of roll and store everything up. If you want to reduce the amount of room you have to take up in your vehicle, that's fine, you could probably get rid of this, but you're gonna see why it would be a little bit weird to work with here in a second without a base mattress. Depending on the rooftop tent, when you deflate this, and I always leave the deflator, which is on the other side, it's got a deflator valve on this side. Um, I always leave the deflator valve open if I'm gonna close my rooftop tent so that if it is squeezing any air out, it's not gonna squeeze this and explode it or cause a hole. So I always leave that open and then close my tent up. But this does fit in um, several of my uh, clamshell or wedge, not clamshell, the wedge style tents, the ones that open like this. But my my clam style, the ones that flip and then open and flip open like on the demon air, I can't leave that in here. So just a little, little FYI. All right, let's talk about the next layer. Okay, now the next layer, before we get to the rest of the sleep system, this is, this is my heated sleeping pad. This is something I turn on and it's the only thing that relies on electricity and, and I turn this on when it's really cold. And this um, is basically a heated sleeping pad. It's made by this company, Mantoli, Mantuli. It's got a couple of different heating zones in it. It has one in the chest, oops, bang my mic, one in the chest, one in the midsection and one for your feet, which the feet to me offers the, the most warmth. Like the, the, if your feet are cold inside your sleeping bag and they're already cold when you get in, it's, I find really hard to recover heat uh, in your feet. So if you've got just a little bit of extra heat coming in, which in this case, we've got a very low amount of heat, but inside of our sleep system, it makes a huge difference in, in keeping your feet warm. With this, it's, uh, it's got a little plug here. There's a little zipper pouch, and this just plugs into a USB port and doesn't draw very much power. You can plug this into a little portable battery bank. I would probably recommend 20,000 milliamps uh, if you want per night. You know, it does draw a bit, but if you're running some sort of power station or or like my alley cab has built-in USB ports that we power in it, you just you know, unpack this, you just plug it into a USB port and there's a little button here. You hit, turn it on and it starts heating up. And it's really nice because if you turn this on, you know, like 15 minutes before bed, you get into your um, sleeping system and it's already warm. It's, it's, it's not a lot of heat. So people are like, oh, well, you know, how hot is it? You know, how much can a USB actually deliver? So here's what my experience has, here's what, here's what my experience has shown me, is inside a, a good warm, winter sleep system, which we're about to get to in a second, a little tiny bit of heat makes a massive difference. You don't want a 110 AC plug heating pad inside your sleeping bag, your sleep system, if you have a really good cold weather sleeping system, you'll be way too hot. I am usually too hot turning this on. So this is like usually below zero. So below zero to minus five, I'm usually 
a little warm with this on inside my sleep system, but it's cozy. And the other thing I wanna talk about is what do you sleep in? Uh, what kind of clothing do you wear when it's really cold out? So before we move on to the rest of this, uh, let me just give you what I currently wear and how I decide what to wear when I go to bed, because that does make a big difference if you're sleeping in the colder weather. So a lot of this is really focused around colder weather, because if it's hot, just get a sheet, put it over top of you, sleep windows wide open in your tent. It's not hard to deal with hot weather, uh, unless it's like super muggy and you need some sort of air conditioning in your tent, but I'm not even gonna go down that road because that never happens for me. It's always about cold weather. So what do I sleep in and what is my decision and thought process when, when uh, going to bed when it's really cold? Well, I try to sleep with as few clothing layers as possible for the weather that I'm in. So this whole sleep system will keep me warm, uh, basically wearing thermal underwear in a thermal shirt, um, I've been down to minus 10 and it's I'm still very, very warm. The other thing is socks. So what do you wear on your feet to bed? So this is the most important tip that I have. This is a combination of, of information that I've collected from researching the, the internet. And this actually came to me from a uh, ex-Navy SEAL who had this huge blog post on what kind of socks to wear to keep your feet warm in cold conditions, wet conditions, and then camping. So first of all, first off, when I go out off-roading in the winter, in the colder weather, in the wet, I always wear wool socks. No underlayer for my feet, never cotton. I never wear cotton socks, I always wear wool. So wool, when it gets wet, it still has a ther thermal properties. It still stays warm and you'll notice this, like in your boots, if your boots get wet, your feet stay warm. But when I go to bed, I sometimes wear socks, sometimes I don't. But here's the key piece that I have for you guys is try not to wear socks. So if you can have a sleep system that's warm enough and you can not wear socks, your feet won't perspire, they won't uh, be wet and they won't be as cold. But that can only take you so far usually with a sleep system. But remember, we just said that this heated sleeping pad has a zone for your feet. So there's a little bit of heat coming out over your feet which will warm them up if they're already cold going into bed. Now, if it's really cold, I will wear wool socks to bed, but the key is don't wear the socks that you came to bed with to bed. Put on a fresh pair of socks. Even though your socks don't feel wet, there's always a little bit. Even if it's 5%, 2% moisture, that will reduce how warm they can be. Now, wool is really good at being warm even when it's damp, but a fresh pair of dry socks going to bed air feet out a little bit, make sure they're dry, put those on, will make a big difference at night. That's uh, what I usually sleep in when it's super cold. Thermal underwear, if I have to, I'm gonna be as dry as I can in my tent at night. And um, this system is really good at keeping me warm. I usually don't need any extra layers. So, okay, let's get on to the next couple of layers. Okay, so we've got our thermal rest layer, which is keeping us isolated from the cold underneath us. We've got a quilt layer that has USB heat that gives us a little bit of supplemental heat if it's really cold and we wanna be comfy. And then the next is this crazy sleep setup that I came across after doing a ton of research. And this is made from a company called Zen Bivy. Probably never heard of them, but if you go and check out their company, it was started by a um, professional mountaineering guy. He's, you know, super into high altitude, cold weather, extreme hiking and camping. And he did a bunch of research into sleeping bags versus sleeping quilts and came up with this sleep system and started a company called Zen Bivy. As always, I will leave affiliate links down in the description if you wanna help support me making these videos. They pay me a little bit of commission if you click on them and possibly buy something. It costs you nothing, but it helps me continue to make videos buy products for research, go on trips to try products out and make cool videos for you guys. So I appreciate it. Check out all of the links uh, in the description, click on as many as you can. And if you're thinking of buying anything, I, I appreciate it if you come back here and click on the link and, and make the purchase. It just helps sustain making videos for you guys and, and literally costs you guys nothing. And sometimes I do have discount codes for certain things if I uh, am working with a brand. So keep an eye out for those. So why do I like this system so much? It is uh, a two-piece system. So we have a underlayer, it's a sheet, 
So this goes back to why I have a mattress. And when you order this system, you specify the dimensions that you want. So I got this the size of 30 by 90, like it says right here, 30 inch, uh, to go onto my Thermarest Mondo King, and this is the XL, this is the big one. They, Zen Baby does sell camping air beds, air mattresses, if you check them out. Uh, I haven't tried any of them, but I already had the Thermarest, so I just ordered the one I needed. And so the way this works is you've got a sheet system that will attach to your your bed. Fits nice and snug on your airbed. It has look at, even spaces for your inflation and deflation knobs, so you can leave it on here all the time. I do find it a little bit tight if you completely inflate the Thermarest to four inches. But as I mentioned, I rarely ever need to do that. It's I do find it too firm if you put all of the air in here. So it's usually not this tight. Underneath, we have a sheet. Now this is just a thin, thin layer that wraps around your airbed, keeps it on it. But attached to the sheet, we have this hood. Now this whole system is down. Zen Baby does make uh, several different models depending on how cold you want. I bought the coldest one. So this is their 10 degree Fahrenheit bed, which I think if I do the conversion is uh, minus, minus 12 degrees Celsius. So, so well below freezing. And that is a comfort rating. A lot of time when you look at sleeping bags, they usually say, oh, how cold they're rated for. That's usually like survival. Usually the, the comfort rating is like 10 degrees warmer than the actual rating. So this is a 10 degree Fahrenheit bag, minus 12 degrees Celsius comfort rating. It's super warm even without the heated pad below it. But anyways, on the top of this, we have a down hood. Now, what's nice is you kind of just slide your pillow in here and if it's really cold, you can sleep with this over the top of your head, but you don't have a hood wrapped over the top of your head and now it's connected to the rest of your sleeping bag. So it really makes maneuvering a lot more challenging. And then on the side of this, we have this edge piece here and on here we have these little clips these little hooks there's no zippers on this system but we have this little flap here and then we have these hooks now the other part of this is a down quilt that goes that goes over the top of this on this quilt we have uh, where color they thought of everything color coordinated loops so we have a yellow loop we have a yellow hook you hook it on and now the quilt stays attached to the sheet. And we have three of these. We have a green one here and we have a blue one. No, four of these, blue one and another yellow one. It's really hard to get this mixed up. And then now this quilt is attached to the sheet. So now throughout the night, this quilt isn't gonna just slide off your bed. It's gonna stay on top of you all night long. And for your feet, we have a convertible foot box. So this is just a blanket. And if it's not really cold, we just leave this unhooked. There's a little hook here, you undo it, and it opens up, and it's basically just like having a down blanket on top of you. If it's really cold, there's another couple of hooks here in the bottom, and we hook them together. And now we have a little foot box that overlaps, and you can kind of stuff your feet in the end of it here, and it's, it's gonna stay kind of wrapped around your feet all night long, keep your feet warm, keep any drafts from coming into here out. And because up here, we've hooked this on, and this is super wide, you don't have any draft coming in into here underneath the quilt. Like it's really hard to get an open spot to have a draft coming in here. So when it's really cold, it stays really warm. The thing that I like more than any of that is I am not confined in a little sleeping bag. If you hate being constrained in a sleeping bag at night and you can't sleep your, you know, you sleep on your side, maybe with your arms out. You have a lot more flexibility with a quilt because one, it's super wide. You can grab a corner and just kind of tuck it under the side of you and stay warm and stay comfortable. You can hang your arms out if you want, if it's not super cold. But the other thing is when you have to really hunker down and it's really cold, your hood is not attached to a sleeping bag. It's attached to the sheet, yeah but it's not in the same way. So if you push this a little bit, it isn't pushing your feet up. Like I hate that in sleeping bags. And the other thing is you can just kind of put this over your head and you can put this over the bottom of your face and you just kind of have a little breathing area. And no matter which way you roll around, you've got this nice wide slot to have your, 
to be have your face to be breathing out of. So not only is it warmer, but it's far more comfortable if you're more of a restless sleeper or you're bigger, you know, I've got very wide shoulders. That's why I've got the 30 inch wide bed and I can get my arms out of here. Often I don't even pin the other sides down unless it's really, really cold. Like just a little bit of info about this. It's 85% minimum down quantity. It's uh, duck down. The finished size is 90 by 64 inches. So it's very wide. Uh, the outer and inner layer are nylon. Uh, weight of the filling. So it's 858 grams is the net weight of filling material in this. So just give you a little bit of data. It's super light. If you weren't bringing an air bed or whatever, this can pack up into like a very small package, but I don't really care about that. I care about comfort and convenience most of all. So we've got this whole system. Now this is not cheap. I'm going to warn you guys, this is not a cheap setup. The Thermarest Mondo King XL, I'm just looking on my phone because I can't remember the numbers. The Thermarest Mondo King is pretty pricey. It's 325 bucks Canadian, so it's probably like 200 bucks or so, 250 bucks US. I'll put links down in the description if you guys want to grab the prices directly depending on where you are. The heated USB sleeping pad, sleeping pad is pretty cheap. I think it was like 90 bucks or so on Amazon. Um, not too bad. But the Zen Bivy, um, system so the core quilt and we have the 10 10 degree down in the extra large one the big one 60 was it 65 inches wide or whatever um, it's 310 bucks us and then uh, you have to add the sheet on and i have the core sheet with the down in 30 inch so they do make like synthetic uninsulated sheets as well um, and that's another 109 bucks so you're looking at uh, 420 dollars us which is probably about probably about 500 and some change plus some taxes and whatever to get up to canada so you know 500 bucks plus 300 you know you're like you're probably like 900 dollars for this setup but it's a setup that like i expect to use for as long as i go camping and i'm really kind of happy where i have it dialed into right now the therm thermrest mattresses are very good quality. I've had no issues with the valves on them. Um, that's where I've usually found issues with other mattresses. I've had it for two years now, and then I've had the, the uh, Zen Baby for a year now, and it's, it's been great. I really, of all the things, I like not being confined in a sleeping bag when I'm sleeping. That is probably like the best part of this whole setup. Here's basically what it looks like packed up. Keep in mind, there's two pillows in here. We've got the heated sheet, we've got the whole Zambivi system and the Mondo King. Now this is what I was talking about earlier. I haven't really found a great system to kind of protect this. I just get these plastic, I don't want metal ended bungee cords, but these plastic bungee cords with the wider straps. I just wrap it around and this is it. This is what I pack in and out if I need to go between vehicles. But like I said, I can leave this in my wedge style tents unrolled we just kind of move the pillows off to the side. It works pretty good. So you don't always need to be taking it in and out, but I would like to get something that maybe wraps around this before I bungee cord it or gets rid of the bungee cords, just wraps around it and holds it. You can get this a little bit smaller if you spend some more time getting all the air out, but I usually don't. As well, the pillows make the biggest difference. If you take the pillows out of here, it is quite a bit smaller. And one more thing, guys. A huge percent of you guys watching the videos aren't subscribed. If you want to see more gear reviews, Jeep mods, going out camping, doing off-roading kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button. I upload videos all the time. Leave a like. I appreciate it. And if you want to check out some behind the scenes content, I have enabled channel memberships that you can join the channel. Uh, it's right next to the subscribe button and there's a small community with some uh, extra video uploads and things like that going on. So I'll leave you with that. My name's Casey and I'll catch you guys in the next video.